Scandinavian Realheart have published their report for the fourth quarter and the year-end report for 2022. Uh, to discuss uh, the result and the events, I have in the studio its CEO, Ina Laura Perkins. Welcome. Thank you. How do you do? Very well, thank you. Great. Uh, could you briefly describe the company and maybe uh, look back, let's say, five years or so? So we're developing a total artificial heart to treat heart failure. And I joined the company about five years ago. And since then, we've really taken a step from early little startup to really quite established company. We've reduced the risk in many levels, such as we now have a very strong team. We now have really good preclinical results. And we have uh, experience in, uh, in our company from early design all the way through to marketing and sales. Okay, uh, so uh, if we look uh, at the numbers briefly, um, the net result decreased to minus 2.8, uh, the loss decreased uh, to minus 2.8 million Swedish kronos compared to minus 5.1 in the fourth quarter 2021. What is behind this uh, improvement? So as easily explained, in, the, in 2021 we were then having the costs for the recent rights issue that increased the costs for that quarter. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to significant events during the quarter. Uh, you made the third uh, implement, implantation on, uh, uh, in a in vivo stu study. Uh, what, what can you tell us about this? So we're really happy with the results. We've taken a great step forward in terms of the preclinical results. Previously, we had a milestone of uh, 24 hours, and now we've reached four days. And why this is important is because it's the lowest um, survival time that our French competitor had reached before they started clinical studies. So they had, re they had four animals, two survived for four days, one for eight and one for 10 days. So now we're in that four day limit and we're gonna work towards the 10 days. And what we've seen is it's not the product, it's the animal model and it's how you take care of the animal and how the operation uh, works. So we have identified several factors that we're gonna work with optimizing so that we further increase the survival time. Mm -hmm. And during the quarter, there were also uh, a few events and activities. What well, can you tell us about those? I think the main activity was really in international marketing. So it started with a conference in Stockholm. It was called Focus Patient. And this was uh, international within the heart transplant community. So there were, it was, for example, the president of the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplant there, who I was having the opportunity to, to eat lunch with and describe real heart to. And this organization, you know, it's an international organization for doctors all over the world that work with this type of product. So it gives us really great exposure. And then we also have re um, reached exposure towards patients. So it was the chairman and the CEO of different types of patient organization like Women Heart, the Global Heart Hub, and so now we've also had the opportunity to present our concept to them. So great in terms of international marketing towards that community. Towards the general public, we were in the uh, documentary on ZDF, um, Mein Herz, Mein Motto, and this is a German um, chef, a celebrity chef, who um, he follows a heart transplant patient, so from heart failure all the way through successful transplant, and they really talk about why there's such a need for transplants. There is the organ deficiency, everybody knows that, but maybe not in the general public, and Real Heart is presented as one of the alternative solutions for a transplant. Mm -hmm. And it la ended with uh, an international conference in China. I was able to be an invited speaker and present digitally. And this was seen by also medical professionals all over the world. I think by now it has received, uh, well, it has received at least 24,000 views, maybe now by even more. And we've already uh, seen that we are gaining followers in the clinical community from um, all over the world, uh, including, for example, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to events after the period, uh, you are involved with Sweden's first patient simulator, the co collaboration between Real, Real Heart and KTH, the Royal uh, Institute of Technology, I think it is, um, to develop this simulator, uh, hybrid simulator. Uh, it started in 2022 after a, a grant of 4 million Swedish kronos from Vinova Smart Electronics. 
what can you tell us about this? Well, I must first say that the, the funding is uh, from Vinnova, but uh, through also Forma and the Energimyndigheten. Um, and we've also received support from the ETH Zurich University in Switzerland with the help of actually constructing this uh, patient simulator. Um, what we're going to use it for is to ensure that our clinical controller is as safe as possible. There have been many patient deaths uh, with uh, other market-leading technology where the patient has not been able to handle the controller safely. We feel that we've already stress tested this a lot. We have sent our device to Professor Libra Fresiello um, when she was previously in the Netherlands. No, in, in Belgium, she's in the Netherlands now. And we told her, okay, here you go, Libra, try to break it. So she has um, so much experience in this field. She's an advisor to the EU on medical devices, over 50 publications in the topic of uh, patient simulators. And so she tried to break it and she said, I can't. And I'm actually impressed by the control algorithm. So then the, the following on to this now is we want a second opinion. So we're asking Serena uh, Dual from KTH, now you use this new patient simulator and now you try to break it. <laughs> She's not going to be able to either. Um, but what she has is a lot of experience in um, looking at the design of devices for smaller patients. So what we plan to use this uh, simulator for as well is to start the development of our mini heart towards uh, smaller patients such as female. Okay. What other uh, advantages will, you, uh, will, will this simulator bring to you? Well, it'll bring a lot of advantages to Sweden. This type of technology has not existed in Sweden before. Um, for us, it means that less travel internationally to do this types of tests, so we can increase the, number, the amount of testing that we do. Um, but it's also available to other Swedish companies within this field to use. Um, uh, Real Hearts Medical Council have two new members. Can you tell us about them? Yes, so we have two new cardiac surgeons, and uh, we have uh, we have had uh, working with them before. Uh, Ulf Schellmann, he used to be part of the board of uh, Real Heart in the early days, and then he left to uh, start up a lot of implantation programs, transplantation programs in the Middle East, um, amongst others, Saudi Arabia. He has experience from all types of devices, uh, LVADs with HeartMate 3, also Syncardia to all the fresh heart, uh, the Maquette rotor flow pumps. So uh, he brings a lot of clinical experience to us, and he is very engaged. It's so much fun to have him join us. And the Professor uh, Bart Mains, we've also worked with previously, but now we're formalizing this collaboration. We're very happy to see that he's uh, excited to join us. And, uh, you know, he has a lot of experience in doing clinical trials. So hopefully he can be one of them who, who leads clinical trials in the future for us. Mm -hmm. um, if we move on to the financial side, uh, right now the, you are offering a subscription right uh, holders, the right to subscribe to Heart TO1. The subscription period will run from for, ran from 1st of February until the 28th on Tuesday, I think. Uh, uh, and uh, today is the last day of trading. Uh, when will we be given the result from this? So as soon as possible in March. I won't be able to give you an exact date, but uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, could you tell us more about, uh, you've been com communicating about the, 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 the milestones going forward. So could you describe these phases up to 2026 or so? So we need to deliver on our preclinical data packages, which is uh, blood testing in vitro, um, animal studies and reliability studies. So that's like mechanical reliability, software reliability. And with those results, we will then apply to do uh, clinical trials. But we will already, and we are already communicating with the regulatory authorities so that we keep them updated of our progress and our results. Um, then we plan to do a uh, first in human study, a small study, following with a larger study. If you look at what our European competitor did, they were implanting 14 patients and then it led to the CE mark. We're working towards the US and the EU in parallel, for example, regarding our quality management system and uh, visits to FDA as such, um, because we think that uh, the US is historically the biggest market, it's an important market. Um, Europe is our home market, and we want to see which one goes the fastest, so that's why we're working on them parallel. But w currently we're thinking Europe is going to be where we first launch. Mm -hmm. And you're aiming for also using 14 patients, since that was okay, uh, an, a big enough number for your competitor. Yes. Okay. 
So uh, if we move on to your subsidiary in Australia, how is that developing? So now it's an up and running company and uh, what we do in Australia is our controller development and we do this together with our partner Hydrix. Uh, they've developed the controllers for eight other LVADs and one artificial heart so we thought why do this ourselves when we can work with the experts. And the other beauty of working with uh, Australia is the uh, R&D tax incentive. So whatever we do invest in our controller development, we do get a 43% cash back uh, as, as a tax credit and we can reinvest that. Okay. Um, you have uh, communicated needs for investment. Uh, can you describe the current situations uh, and the various solutions you have for that? Yes, so um, as any, so I started talking about the risks and I think five years ago when I joined, there were a lot of different risks, but now I think we've boiled it down to the remaining risk that we see is a financial risk. Um, and to address this, we're working on diversification of our financing funds. So looking at uh, all types of non-diluted funding, like we're working on the uh, European grants and we had some great successes within 2022. Both the EIC accelerators started paying out, Eurostars, Vinova, Smart Electronique from Formas and Energie Mindigheten. Um, and then we uh, are working with the Australian subsidiary with the R&D tax credit. We got an innovation loan from Almi. So these are all examples of the types of non-dilutive funding that we're trying to do to really make our funds go as far as, uh, as, far as possible. Then when it comes to equity investment, we've been nominated for the 15 million euro from the EIC fund in Luxembourg. And uh, since the, they start paying out the grant, we're in this sort of due diligence process. And what we've uh, come to understand is there is one criteria, and that is that we find match funding. So in terms of that being an EIC company, we gain access to other European investors that have invested in um, EIC funded companies before and a sort of a, a recommendation that we market ourselves now more internationally. So we're marketing ourselves to investors in the Middle East, in Europe, and um, but we don't want to become, we don't want to dilute our shareholders. So another option that we're also looking into is the EIB, European Investment Bank. They gave a um, loan to our European competitor of 30 million euros. And these, these loans are also very um, beneficial in terms of their um, criteria. So we are also, we have pitched the EIB before, we're following up on this process because we think that we're also worthy of this type of loan. Uh, so it'll be interesting to follow your communication around this. Yes. Um, how, uh, what is your status on cost uh, consciousness and cost effectiveness? So I think we've always been a very cost conscious company. And uh, when I joined, there were a lot of consultants. And this is because there was a fear of not getting the next investment round and so on. But we've proven ourselves and we've done really good results. So before the, um, we did a, then like do a change before the last rights issue, where we looked over our costs, really tried to reduce anything that we thought was not absolutely needed. And we started converting consultants to staff. To staff. So now we have um, much more work for the money um, in, in terms of output. And uh, I think that uh, we are a very lean organization. If we need to, we have found ways to make funds go further in the past. So I definitely think that uh, we are in a good situation. So if you look back to the full year of 2022, um, are you satisfied? I am very satisfied. We've strengthened the company in very, very many ways. So, uh, and we have some great results that we didn't have a year ago. Hmm. And what are your expectations on 2023? So my expectations is that we continue according to plan, like we have done. And uh, initially we'll now focus a lot on the blood testing on the clinical version. Um, and uh, what comes also the, the, the rights issues, what comes in the next quarter. And uh, then we'll focus a lot on product productification, um, developing our production methods and communicating with our regulatory authorities for uh, with our great results. Ina Laura, that was all my questions. Thank you for taking your time answering them. Thank you.